I have designed a new personality chip and this one is a little bit taller than the normal one. The normal one is on the left or the the one I released previously is on the left and the new one is on the right. So why is this a little bit taller? The reason is if you have an R unit droid you run into a couple of issues with the smaller uh, personality chip. The first problem is just getting it out because it's so short you, you barely have enough of the PCB to grip your fingers on to pull it out especially if you've got big fat fingers like me. Uh, but the other reason, the more important reason why this version now exists is if you have a socket for your memory chip the small version won't fit in your R unit droids because the, the the whole stack here is so tall that it uh, hits up against a lip around the, the personality chip slot and it prevents it from inserting all the way. Let me show you that real quick. Here is the personality chip slot of an R unit droid and if you have a short or small personality chip that will fit in there just fine. The problem is, if you try to pull it out, you've got maybe a couple of millimeters of PCB to pinch with your fingers to get a grip and pull it out, and it's it's not a pleasant experience. Um, life can be made a little easier if you go online and find these 3D printed clips from Sputter that clip onto the personality chip like so. That certainly makes life a little easier for getting these out. However, you don't have a 3D printer, but you do have a tall version of the personality chip. You have miles of PCB to grab onto with your finger, and that is so much easier to pull out of the R unit personality chip slot. But there's another problem, another reason to go with the tall version. And that is, if you happen to design your personality chip or build it using a socket and a dip uh, memory chip, why would you do this? Because with a socket you can pop the chip out and very easily put it into your programmer to reprogram it, then put the memory chip back in here and put it back into your droid like so. Except this doesn't fit. What's happening here is the chip is hitting against the lip of this recess where the personality chip slot is. You can see it's pushing on the chip and slightly kicking it up like that. It doesn't fit that slot. So if you have through-hole memory chips, your only option with the short version is to solder the chip directly to the board like so. And only then will it fit. But now you run into the problem where you only have, oh my goodness, just a couple of millimeters to grip onto. What a pain in the butt to remove that. But with the tall version of the personality chip, there is now plenty of room for that socketed chip to fit. The door still closes, and again, miles of PCB with which to grip onto. Uh, it cannot go the other way around. Well, it does, it fits, but the door won't close because the chip is blocking that. So, you will have to put it in only in this direction, or you could just remove the door, which comes out like that. But just before I uploaded this video with the links to the tall version of the personality chip, you have already ordered your short version through Oshpark, and you planned on using socketed through-hole chips with your personality chip. What do you do? Well, you have two options. You can put another order in for the tall version of the personality chip, or as I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to forego the socket and solder the chip directly to the board. If you solder the chip directly to the board, how the heck do you reprogram it? Well, you have 
two options. The first option is this. I covered this in a previous video. This is a personality chip to DIP8 adapter. So you can take this, put your personality chip in here like so, grab your uh, memory programmer of choice. This is the CH341A, which is $10 on like Amazon or eBay. And you can put it in like so. And now you are ready to program your chip. But if you don't want to go through the hassle of finding the parts and assembling one of these adapters, you could alternatively go online and look for a DIP8 chip clip. These are clips designed to go over DIP8 chips like so. They are pressing these pins up against the sides of the uh, DIP8 chip, creating a connection. And then at the top here, I have wires connected to it that run off to this little adapter that you can plug into your programmer like so. And now you are ready to program your chip. You will, if you bought an, a programmer like this, most likely have a chip clip uh, that came with it. But it will be designed for the smaller pin, smaller pitched surface mount version of these chips. The dip adapter, you will have to go online and find. These are, they can cost from $10 to $20, $30. You, you have to search around and try to find the, the cheapest option you can find. Uh, you might find some from China for maybe $5. But again, you have to go hunting for these. These are not as common as I wish they were. Um, one other thing to note is if you're using a clip like this instead of the personality chip adapter, um, the version of personality chips that I have designed, the ones that have the two resistors on them, there's one on the front and one on the back for the short version, the tall version, the resistors are both on the front you'll have no problems clipping onto these chips and programming them. If you're using somebody else's personality chip design, or if you're using a stock personality chip, what you may run into is that this middle pin here, the hold pin, is connected directly to the power pin. Uh, that is because the, uh, the droid is using the... Uh, is detecting power on that middle pin to know that a personality chip has been inserted. The downside to that is if you clip onto your chip and you go to program it, your programmer may try to take that uh, hold pin low, which means all the power coming through the power pin is going to be sunk or, or redirected or captured or however you want to think of it by your programmer and it, it the potential is there that a lot of current will go through your programmer and potentially damage it. Uh, so the trick is to just figure out which one of these pins, right, is the hold pin on your uh, chip and pull it off so it's not connected. Most programmers will work fine without the hold pin connected. So which version of the personality chip should you use? It doesn't really matter. It's your personal preference. Functionally, they are both the same. If you use our unit droids, you'll probably find the taller version more useful to you. Even if you use the surface mount version of the memory chip instead of the through hole version, uh, it just makes inserting and removing the personality chips a lot easier. If you're using socketed through hole chips like that, then definitely you want to use the tall version especially if you're using our unit droids. This is the version to go with. I will probably stick to the short version with surface mount memory chips for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one is when I first designed this chip, I ordered a batch of 50 of them, so I have a ton of spares. Uh, there's no point in buying new memory chips or personality chips, I should say, uh, when I already have a bunch of PCBs that'll work just fine laying around. The other reason, I have probably 50 of these memory chips, the surface mount versions. So I'm married to using surface mount instead of through hole. 
and again one of the big reasons for using the tall version is because it better supports through hole versions of the uh, personality chip and the last reason is I really like these uh, 3D printed chip clips that Sputter designed. Using the short version with surface mount memory chip and one of these clips, this whole thing feels like a stock personality chip. It feels the experience is much the same. I like when I put this into in our unit especially how it just fits that recess and it, it really feels like it was meant to go in there. It feels more stock, more original, more correct. So that is what I am going to do going forward. However, there is, and I can't stress this enough, there is no wrong choice here. Use what you want to use. Uh, one last thing to note is that if you go to order these tall versions using the Oshpark link in the description below, you're going to notice that the version that you're going to order is slightly different. And it is only different in that the silk screen, that is the white lettering on the front here and the picture on the back, is different. The important bits, the, the copper traces and how all of these chips and the uh, resistors and capacitors, how all of these are designed and connected, the one you're going to order from Oshpark is exactly the same as this one that I've already tested. It works fine. The main reason is instead of having this tiny little slicer logo on the back, I took a picture of my BB droid Frank, reduced it to two colors, and put it on the back of this. So Frank, who was used extensively in developing the personality chip and exploring how the droid works and you know that whole brain transplant that I had to do with him you know taking the uh, the microcontroller that drives the whole droid and figuring out how to extract the program from it and then writing that to a new chip because the original chip was slowly going bad um, so much work has been done with Frank that I had to immortalize him, and that is why he will be on the back of the tall version of the personality chip. So that's it. That's all that I'm going to talk about. Links in the description below for ordering the chips and previous videos that covered things like the personality chip dip aid adapter how to use one of these, all of that stuff. Good luck, have fun.